five, I think. I might not be my fully energetic self today because I just ran 32 kilometers and that it turns out to be pretty tiring. But the goal today is to build. Uh, the goal today is to work on the thread compiler project and get it to the point where it's actually sending out full threads of tweets so that I can start using it to start to post my 200 words today I learned things projects posts something the whole thing is a project I'm in, tweeting individual posts I guess trying to make my Twitter a little bit more useful so let's see where was I with that project actually Hey fuzzy buddy, I'm still amazed by how quickly you join every life coding event. Um, I don't know exactly how you do it, but I am very happy that you do. CD documents random coding, CD thread compiler, yarn start, and I want to, oh yeah, I wanted to check the description. I'm trying to be better with YouTube descriptions. I'm still getting a hang of it not doing that great interesting so the bot father shows up in chat on YouTube but not in my restream chat room that's interesting so here's what we're doing um, adding actual ability to tweet full threads to my thread compiler.com project so I can finally start using it for real Z's um, thread compiler.com there we go YouTube does not like the bot father that's so sad I think it's probably because of your nickname because it says bot also how loud is my music right now? Can somebody tell me? Because in my office it's very loud and I don't know how much the microphone is picking it up. There we go. A comment from the bot father showed up. I'm gonna make it a bit quieter just because it was so loud I couldn't really think. So we go to localhost 8000 and uh, let's see. We have the Twitter thread. I can write stuff here and I can then make a tweet, uh, a thread out of it. But the problem is that right now when you tweet this out, it's only tweeting the first post or rather it tries to do something with everything and we're gonna try to make it work with a specific, like make it actually post a thread. So I'm going to log in here, log in with Twitter, compiler bam oh why is that not working anymore right so let's fix that first awesome uh, that's actually something that people were complaining about as well last week when they were trying it out if you're not already logged into Twitter it sometimes doesn't actually log you in so I am logged into Twitter so why is this not working let's see auth0 Twitter login Connect your app to Twitter. Time to implement it in your apps. Twitter auth no longer works. There we go. Thank you, Ein Biskan. I'm actually I'm actually super excited about uh, being doing the workshops at Reactathon. I'm, I hope they work really well. As a callback URL back in the day instead of my auth0.com login callback. Twitter must have changed something on their end since it has worked for a year. Ah. Okay, so let's see. Twitter.com. Developer Twitter.com. And if I go to my apps. Let's see. Is this actually misconfigured? callback URL is the right one so that should work mm -hmm. um.
where is the okay so i haven't changed anything map or all the zero settings nor the twitter settings however i just started getting callback url not approved so i'm not actually getting an error i'm just not successfully logging in um what if we look at this so i'm trying to figure out why login isn't working and yeah I'm just trying to see to get it working really. So we have that social logging with auth0 in a few steps. Click connections. So let's go to my auth0 dashboard. Okay. Auth0 login. Ba -ba -da -bum. I'm gonna log in with the normal one. And the thing is that we really need Twitter login to work because this whole tool is all about publishing on Twitter. So if you can't log in with Twitter, there's no point. It's never going to work because it's not going to be able to publish instead of you. So if we go to connections, flip the switch of the selected social network provider to enable it. Uh, connections, social. No. Wait. Dashboard, applications, thread compiler, connections. We're using Twitter. Enterprise, no connections. Passwordless, there are no connections. Okay. Um, that's that. I don't want Google. I don't want username and password. What else do we need to do? Okay, got it. So flip the switch, select the applications in which you would like to use this provider. The, conf the configuration pop-up pop will display there. You can select the desired attributes and permissions that you want to get from the provider. You can also enter your own and consumer keys. Um, okay, what if we just go to dashboard, connections, database. Yeah, okay, social. Okay, one or more connections are using Auth0 development keys, which are only intended for use in development and testing. Okay, I don't want Google. I do want Twitter. Cool. I don't want the default app to use it. I don't want that. I need Thread Compiler and Thread Compiler backend to have Twitter Auth. Continue. Uh, consumer key and consumer secret those come from here I'm gonna have to hide my uh, old weird Apache code um, so it's actually XML I think actually I'm not sure what language does HTTP uh, does dot HD access use I think it's like an There is no specific name for the syntax as a whole, but they are called directives. So, and basically, that that answers your question. Um, okay, so I'm gonna have to hide my screen for a little bit because I'm gonna be dealing with secret tokens and secret things. So, like that, you, keep, you get to keep seeing my beautiful face. Uh, Bum, so I go here. Oh, I know what happened. I regenerated my consumer keys. That's why it stopped working. Ha! So remember last week I was. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, save. Applications, save. Okay, I'm gonna try to see if it's going to work now. So, I think what hap what actually happened was that last week, I I was concerned with security, so I regenerated mo my um, 
I regenerated my Twitter credentials or keys and then it stopped working here. So now I'm going to see if updating that config in auth0 is going to make it work now. Um, and yes, and Biskin, it turns out that HTT uh, Apache actually does support emoji URLs. It was Facebook that had problems with emoji URLs. So log in with Twitter, goes to Facebook, goes to Twitter, goes back, and I am now logged in. Awesome. Uh, it still throws an error, but I think it's going to work. Um, okay, so we got that. Now I'm going to try... I think I know... Log the reason thread compiler dot com couldn't authenticate you with Twitter is because I regenerated my auth tokens. Oops. Let's see. Tweet your thread. Great success. My tweet looks like this. Awesome. So that works. I also mistyped my URL, but whatever. Okay, cool. Um, awesome, awesome. Cool. Next step, getting the actual threads to work. So we fixed that. We don't have any code changes to commit to Git or anything like that. So I can go here and find Twitter API documentation. Twitter API documentation and I'm gonna try to see if there's a single URL we can call to like is there a single API that we can call to post a thread that would make our lives a lot easier if there isn't well then we are gonna have to uh, fake it so post status update look up mm -hmm. Um, API reference guides no API reference okay statuses update um, so destroy show oh embed look up retweet unretweet right oh there's an update with ah that's deprecated so resource URL is that can we post da, 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 three okay status the text of the status update url encode as necessary tco link, link wrapping blah in reply the id of an existing status that the update is in reply to note this parameter will be ignored unless the author of the tweet tweet this parameter references is mentioned within the status text Therefore, you must include at username where username is the author of the referenced tweet within the update. What? Mm, okay. Attachment URL, media IDs. In order for a URL to not be counted in the status body of an extended tweet, provide a URL as a tweet attachment. This URL must be a tweet permalink or direct message deep link. Arbitrary non-Twitter URLs must remain in the status text. Media IDs, you may include up to four photos or one animated GIF or GIF. Possibly sensitive, latitude, longitude, place ID. Okay. So we are going to in fact have to post uh, multiple IDs and string them together with you know, a thing. Well, let's give that a shot then, shall we? I'm going to... Um, what am I gonna do? So we have the tweet button. We should probably move a lot of this logic out of the tweet button. And we also don't... We don't really want the output to be dependent on the rendering here, do we? We should have that done separately. But 
you know what, for now this is gonna be fine. I am, however, going to... I do want to move this code. So our output... Yeah, we're gonna take the input... Um, hmm. I feel like right now I have too much code that's like dependent on... Um, what was I gonna say? It's too... Like my logic is too mu too bound up in my in the logic of my visuals, so I would need to be a good idea to move that out. Um, hmm. So the tweet value set output use context. Yeah, we don't want that. So I'm gonna stop using that, and instead of use effect. We're gonna change this to use memo because it's going to be better that way. So use memo. Ah, this needs to be react. So use memo. Then we're going to take this. Um, we don't need set rendered. We don't need any of that. We can, however, say const rendered equals use memo that takes the current value and returns it so return how does use memo work again react use memo I always forget basic hooks additional hooks use memo memoized value compute expensive value process value blah oh, but because I wonder if mm. so the problem here is that use memo I'm not sure how well it works with promises and remark is a promise based architecture we need it to be promise based we need it to do stuff like this but yeah I guess we try. Let's try how this works. So we have remark, we return a new promise, or let's have, yeah, let's do this way. So return new promise that takes a resolve and a reject, and it does remark blah. So remark use context. Uh, duh like that so if there's an error we reject with an error otherwise we resolve with the output contents right that in theory should work so we have that and let's say that this is an async function but then that should be an async function no let's do it this way so rendered uh, no we're gonna we can't use use memo for this, I think. I'm gonna need to ask... Oh, shit. Uh, that's something I need to ask Ben Abramoff. Um, does anyone know if I can use promises with use memo? Particularly if the result of that promise should be used in rendering I can't figure it out without use state cool so we have that I'm gonna change back our my things uh, well, I didn't I didn't directly mention him, but he's actually very responsive on Twitter and he usually does actually He's very nice about answering people's questions, which I really appreciate um, And I'm gonna see if the randomness if random people on the internet know how to answer if they can't I'm going to start directly tagging Dan Abramov, Ryan Florence and Kent Dodds and people like that who probably know this stuff that I haven't figured out yet. Mostly because they've been thinking about it longer than I have. Okay. So we still have set rendered. 
but we're no longer putting shit in context because we don't want to. In fact, instead, I'm going to change this into a uh, use memo is defined but never used. Yeah, I know. We have, in fact, instead we have use state and use effect. Okay, Matteo, I can use promises, but then how do I use the results of those promises in rendering? Uh, because I'm pre I agree that I think use memo can handle returning a promise from and memoizing it. I don't know how it would memoize the promise itself because it needs to be... There's like a lot of weird reasons why it wouldn't work. Like use memo uses the value of the returned object, but use but promises always have the same ID because uh, it's passed by reference. So a promise is an object, which means use memo can't know when the value of that object changes because it's a promise. It's always the same promise, so it's not changing. So it's never going to recalculate your thing. Plus then you would have to make the entire component a promise because it needs to depend on the output of the promise to return the JSX, which then just blows everything up. So I don't think we can actually do that. But I'm really happy. I'm going to be really excited if somebody figures it out. So, but what we can do is move our remarks, remark stuff into, uh, into the thing. We're going to make a custom hook. So ls source, source, pages, images, components, utils. Okay. So touch source utils. Right now we have auth. And we, instead of auth, we're also going to have a renderer. Remark, let's have remark. Uh, remark renderer, remark JS. Actually, no. Move rm source utils remark, and we're going to have use remark. So touch source utils, use remark JS. And I'm going to open use remark. And here. Yes, exactly. So use memo is a lot like use effect but it returns stuff whereas use effect is meant for side effects um, and use memo it's like use effect plus use state if you use both of them together that creates use memo I think so we have here uh, pam, ex export default function use remark Yes, actually, use memo and use effect have the same guarantees. You're using this value here as their as that's how they know when to run whether this value changes. Um, so that's how that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I hope it's implemented in the core in the future. I know that Suspense is supposed to be doing stuff with being able to handle promises as returns from um, React functions, but I don't think it's quite there yet. I've seen people experimenting with it, and I've experimented with it myself, and that was cool, but I haven't seen it actually work in practice yet. So use state and use effect extends up from react and we also need all of this shit cool so now we have uh, depending on the input this shit reruns set rendered and we're going to return rendered right cool so now we have a hook Uh, yeah, the reason why you don't have the guarantee that use memo, I think right now you do have that guarantee. He just doesn't want us to get used to that guarantee because in the future they're going to implement like proper caching for use memo. So it's going to try to drop things that haven't been used in a while and stuff like that. So it's better to think of it as a caching strategy rather than as a guarantee that things aren't rerunning. It's also a subtle... A subtle like hey you should use 
effects if you're worried about multiple runs, not use memo. Uh, but I think it's more like a future looking concern than actually, you know, something that comes from the current implementation. So we're importing use remark from blah blah utils use remark and now here I can say const maybe the object would be the same for a promise but the values may be different. Yes, so I could value I could diff on those values, but mind you, I don't know what those values are until the promise resolves. That's kind of the problem with um, you know, with that's the problem with oh my god, what was I gonna say? Basically, it's a tough problem to solve because of reasons, and my brain is being tired right now. So, what we just did was take a bunch of logic and extract it into a new custom hook, which will let us use the same hook in other places. And right now, let's see if it still works. Um, use remark module error, error value is not defined. Where is it trying to use value? Here it should use input. Object is not a function. Where is that happening? Oh, right. No? Wait, that should work. Use remark value. Export default function use remark. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Um, don't, don't use, don't uh, mix default and named exports. It leads to weird problems. So now if I type here, this should still work. And, ah, yes. So, there's a funny bug in my remark implementation. I'm gonna fix it later, I don't wanna fix it right now, but if you use exactly four characters when you're bolding or italicizing something, it uh, fails. I don't know why, but look. Four characters fails, three characters works, five characters works, four characters dies. No idea why that is, uh, but it's not something we're gonna work on today. That's gonna be a bug that we keep. It's a bug that we keep that we let burn for now. Git at source. Git commit minus a minus m. Extract stuff into custom use remark hook. There we go. Git push origin master. Now for the reason we did that is so that we can use the same hook when we are tweeting stuff out. Check this out. So we have the tweet button now, and this tweet button right now is doing too many things, way too many things. So, uh, yeah. So we're gonna see what we can do about this function. Uh, first of all, it needs, hmm, what do we do here? So we have the use remark function, tweet embed, embeds the tweet when, some, when we are successful. Otherwise we have an error, tweeting failed, and we only show the button if we are authenticated, right? Right. So the next step, is extract hi kiwi we need to extract all of this crap about uh you know hmm, how should we do this let's see so we can make a an api of some sort Right, Kiwi? Or what else can we do? Because right now we have too much state. Oh, yeah, sorry, Kiwi, the purge doesn't work today. So my cleaners broke his perch, 
and he tried landing on it right now and he got very confused when it wasn't where he's used to. Sorry, Kiwi. Um, yes, exactly what Matteo Krasnik said. If you use use memo to return a promise, then you'd have to await for that promise in order to use the wrapped value, which means you can't get the value in the current cycles, which means you have then have to use use state, and everything gets very complicated. But ideally what I would like is to be able to use a promise in use memo, and then return a promise from my react function, and resolve JSX when we have all the values. But I think that is complicated. So. Here, what were we doing? We had the call private API thing. So on click, we say uh, send tweets. Burp. Babel react. So we have sent tweets. And we can actually move all of this stuff into a new hook. So we can have a hook that says const uh, send tweets equals use use Twitter thread. It just gives us the send tweets and it should also tell us um, so it returns tweet tweets error or send tweets right tweets error send tweets mm, nah. let's do it as an object it's gonna be better as an object easier for us to use so we can take all of this shit out actually no we still need is authenticated and we're gonna you create a use Twitter thread which is going to now let's say use Twitter API, Twitter, and let's call it use Twitter thread. So touch source utils use Twitter thread JS, use Twitter thread JS, and we say what? Export default function, which doesn't take any arguments and does a bunch of shit. So it's going to import thread container state. That's how it's going to get the uh, the values or the inputs. So um, standard JS. So I'm not sure exactly what it is about VS Code, but I what I do is click down here and then I can change it to React mode. It has JavaScript mode and re Babel mode and React mode, and they're, this, they're supposed to be the same prettier settings, but they behave differently. However, you can always find all of my VS Code configuration on here. This is all my VS Code config. Cool. So we have the thread container, tweet button, that stuff and we're are we gonna need off yes so I'm gonna take off here and I'm gonna take all of this stuff and move it here like that and we're going to import what mm hmm export default function use Twitter thread okay and uh, from react so I'm still figuring out everything that I need to move there because basically all of this shit needs to go so if there's no error um, if Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out the API here. Mm, let's also, let's keep success for now. So 
use Twitter thread is going to be a hook that uh, how do I get is authenticated du -du -du. where are we so use Twitter thread is a hook that is going to make my um, API call deal with state and stuff locally and only return the resulting tweets success error and a callback that I can call to actually do the sending um, so we'll see how that works so use Twitter thread um, Okay, I'm still importing stuff here and I need state and context. So I feel like I've kind of strayed from what I originally wanted to do with this live coding. We started doing all the other shit, which is okay actually. It's fine to do that. So we are returning tweets, error, success, and send tweet. Okay. Uh, so our error our success starts as null, our error starts as empty, and our tweet tweets set tweets start as an empty array. And we take the output of our we take the input from our context, which is the stuff that we're typing on the left side. And then here we are going to have this stuff. Hi Kiwi. So our call private is going to be called a tweet function. So call private is an async tweet send tweet that takes a single input, right? Single input. Mm, actually, it takes a tweet. And we're gonna have to figure out how to use. When is my D next D3 live session? Um, that is a good question. I'm not really sure yet. Is there is there something particular you're looking for in a D3 live session? Because right now, in terms of D3 stuff, I'm focusing on launching React for Data Visualization on February 25th ish that week, and I'm. I'm thinking of offering like a four to five hour online workshop as a bonus for the first couple of people who buy. I was thinking like maybe the first 50 or something get a free almost full day um, live code workshop where we go through most of the stuff that's in the course. That's Those are early days ideas, but that's the direction I'm thinking in. And I'm also doing a React and D3 workshop at Reactathon in March, which is gonna be cool. Okay. So we have the send tweet function. It needs to get the tweet. And then once it gets the tweet, it uh, it needs to do what? Uh, if the status code is 200, we return, what do we return? Ah, uh, we're gonna have a function. Function send. Let's do consts. Eh. Function send tweet. Send tweets. Is that what it's called? Tweet button send tweets. Yeah. Send tweets. That is going to do stuff. Okay. So it's going to be a function that sends tweets, blah, blah, blah. And now here, th this one, so we have a function that sends one tweet, and then we're wrapping a function around it that sends multiple tweets. So I'm gonna figure it out for one first. So send tweet takes a tweet, gets the auth token, uses HTTP to talk to my private end endpoint, which we 
built over the last couple of live codings and it's now living on an AWS Lambda somewhere. That gets the data and the status code. If the status code is 200, we return data.message. And we know that success is true. Otherwise, we raise a new raise new API error that I am not gonna really sh let's just JSON stringify the data like that uh, throw is it throw throw new API error and here we're going to say how do I make um, JavaScript custom errors because I forgot how to do those custom errors extending blah 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 con class error class uh huh okay okay so let's do that so class API error extends error constructor super message this name API error right like that so we do that stuff data message throw new otherwise we um, throw new error I did throw I did send a whole blog on errors just the other day I'm now trying to use the lessons from that blog to have sensible error thingies um, I just had to look up how to make a custom error class because I forgot so we are now gonna do that now here's how we're gonna use this to have sensible error handling and I have a feeling my bird is up to no good give me just a second Kiwi Kiwi Okay, Kiwi is alive. Uh, he's going through a weird... Um, cool. So, this shade, there's definitely going to be a lot of that going on. And for anyone who's worried about the bird, he's basically he's going through a weird nesting period, and one of the nests he has discovered is climbing into the bed, which is very, very dangerous for him. But luckily, this isn't what he was doing right now. He was just eating shoes, so all is well. So we have the send tweets, and we get the input. And then here, if you look at the thread render, we split the input by minus ss, minus i. We're going to do that. Input split, and we're going to take the first one for now. So const tweet equals that. Then we say try catch a error uh, try catch error mm -hmm. normally a react component rendered async would be done in lifecycle so that's the thing you can't render components async they have to synchronously render and then you do other shit which is why we are using use effect to do exactly what Einbiskan just said. So try is, um, let's see, oh, it's let tweet. Uh, this is going to be terrible, but we're going to try it anyway. Let, let tweet send tweet, and it returns our message. We're going to say tweet equals a weight of tweet of tweet. This is terrible, so, oh, okay, it's actually called send tweet. Send tweet 
await of send tweet catch error if type of error equals API error, uh, which is a thing how this works. No, it needs to be that. Or if error dot name. Yeah, if error dot name equals API error, then we handle the error. Otherwise, we're going to throw the error. Else, re throw error. So we're retrowing. If we don't know how to handle the error, we're retrowing it so that something else in the stack can handle that thing and deal with it. If we do know it's an API error, then we're going to say set success to false, set error to error dot uh, message, I think. Yeah, error dot message. And that's that. If, however, everything works, we're going to set tweets to uh, all the previous tweets plus the current tweet. Right? Right. Now let's see if that works. I'm going to close that so I stop showing you all of my keys. Up, up, um. Okay, the cleaning up talking to Lambda API into a custom hook work. We're going to see if this worked. Tweet your thread. Tweeting failed. Pa -pa -pa -pam. We just got an error back. User ID request payload. What was the error? Um, hmm. How do we check what the error was? Function send tweets. Ah. Wait. How were we even able to call anything? Let's try reloading that. Um, module error. Tweet is assigned value but never used. This is in tweet button. So in tweet button, here tweets is assigned. Aha. What we have to do is tweets.map and we are rendering a tweet for each thing. Like that. Now it might work. Uh, ba -bum. There are any errors? Use Twitter. Okay, let's try redoing it. I'm, I seem to be. Oh wait, I didn't actually Im import it. So import use Twitter thread from dot dot slash utils use Twitter thread like that. Uh, our, and it needs to be async so this needs to be an async function it's for default async function fail to compile let's try it again wait no this one doesn't have to be async this one needs to be async async function send twi tweets because if use Twitter thread is async, then uh, stuff is going to stop working. Now, what else is undefined? Let's see. Info bootstrap finished. Output is not defined in output, right? Because the message is actually our tweet. And data is not defined because... Data is not defined on line 36. 36. Aha. Okay. Throw new API error. Let's actually, let's just do error like this. Now it might work. 
Okay. Cool. Let's try this. Are there actually 11 viewers? That's pretty cool. So, date, date cleaning up, talking to uh, API. Did moving, eh, cleaning up, talking to an API into a custom hook work? Okay. Tweet your thread. Doom. Hooks can only be called inside the body of a function component. Interesting. Uh, okay, that, that actually makes sense. So we need to move this hook out of the sent tweets and move it here. And now it might work. So that did moving all logic into a custom hook actually work. Tweet your thread. Not sure anything is going on. Okay, we are talking to the private API and it responded with message being created. But then all of this stuff didn't work. Because check this out. If I go to my profile, we're going to see that I did actually tweet this out. Hmm. Okay, so this worked, but and then calling set state stuff from an async function function inside a custom hook failed to propagate info to the consumer uh, info to the consumer I think I'm holding it wrong somehow and let's add uh, let's copy this because I'm not sure why this why it's not working. It should be working. Twitter blah pr, car, carbon. See, ranting on Twitter is how I get help and how I learn things. So when I'm live coding, it helps me to do that as well. Because then by the time we finish live coding or you know whatever, we get to learn stuff, and uh, then I write blog posts about it and emails and stuff like that but the life coding is, I like to life code while I'm also learning this stuff because I think that makes it more interesting for everyone involved cool okay so what's next what can we try here? We didn't get an we didn't blah. We didn't get the result. How can we see if Hmm. So we now have a problem also because testing all of this stuff is creating real world effects where people on Twitter are seeing what I'm clicking and what I'm doing which, you know, probably doesn't Oh, that's what I did wrong. I'm an idiot. Uh, ba -ba, I forgot to click set success. Set success. True. Wait, no. I'm dumb. I just forgot to call set success when things go well. Face palm. Okay, let's try that. So if I click tweet your thread, actually let's reload just in case because I'm never sure how well Gatsby hot reloading works. As much as I love Gatsby, it's just like, uh, you know. So I'm doing that, calling tweet your thread, and now we have great success. Yep. Uh, 
Each child in a list should have a unique key prop. Yes, it should. Yes, it should. Cool. Awesome. So that works. We've now cleaned up our code and we are ready to move on to the next level, which is going to be using the remark, using remark here to parse our shit so that it works better. Uh, how do I do that? So set tweets, tweets, set success, set success, false, set error. Um, right, git status, git at source, git commit minus a minus m, move tweet sending, tweet sending to a custom hook, git push origin master, cool. Now where where are we at now? Let me see how many people are still interested in this stuff. Mm, thread render, th use Twitter thread. Uh, what was I doing? Right, so now we have to figure out how to, oh wow, that is a lot of viewers. Uh, I'm probably gonna go for another maybe half hour at most, because I feel like once it gets past an hour, it, I mean, I guess it already doesn't really perform well on the YouTube algorithm, but you know, I feel like an, an hour is still has better chances than a two hour or something stream. So we do tweet.id string. That's gonna be our key as well. Now use Twitter thread. Here we get the tweet. Now, how do we parse that tweet? We have use remark as this stuff, which, hmm. Oh, nice. What kind of college are you going to, Botfather? Mm. I think I know what we need to do. We got to move this to be here. So we're going to say const uh, render equals a me method that gets an input and returns this stuff. Yes. So remark use UTF-8 process input error and output. Then so it returns a new promise with a resolve and a reject, blah, and tip, like that, no, what am I missing? Input returns a new promise that then does, I guess, like that. No, so tip, close that, close that. Close that, close that. That should work. Why is it still complaining? Oh, right, this is why it's complaining. So here we're going to say render dot, then we get the output and we say set rendered with output dot contents and dot catch error console dot error of error and we remove all of that stuff so that should work now and here we're gonna have to if error we call resolve with we reject with the error nice bot father that sounds amazing i hope you enjoy your day of class tomorrow uh, reject with the error or resolve with the output and we're going to export this one as well so now we have a default export and we have a thingy that we can use so in use twitter thread we're going to okay, actually let's call this render tweet so it's easier to see what's going on render tweet uh, with the input, then output, then or catch, 
and use Twitter thread here when it's sending a tweet it's going to it gets the tweet and then it says um, what should it say tweet is a wait sent tweet and tweet is a wait render tweet of tweet so we render the tweet then we send the tweet and we get the Twitter result or errors happen like that um, see you next time bot father hope you enjoy class next week and we are going to import yeah okay we're already importing render tweet from use remark thread render use remark now where are we use remark here has a reject stuff cool 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 so this should now work we now have a use twitter thread that renders the tweet and then does stuff with it uh boom. Okay, so did I successfully migrate bolding and such things to a uh, to an easier to use hook? Tweet your thread. Aha, there was an error now. What was the error? So if I go to my network, private API, headers, request payload, data message, preview, what did we actually send? Uh, can I see the body of what I sent? Let's see, zoom in. Um, per, per, private, provisional headers, that's the bearer stuff. Request payload, user ID, Twitter, message, data, messages, history. Did I success? Okay, so that worked. But what was the error that we got back? Did I actually tweet it out? Okay. Hmm. Okay, I feel like I feel my brain is slow is starting to slow down a little bit uh, because I have no idea what went wrong here oh I know we can check on AWS we do we have logs on AWS that are gonna tell us potentially tell us what went wrong so let's see because it looks from what I could see in my network logs that we successfully sent a rendered tweet but then something weird happened and I don't know what that weird thing was. CloudWatch, uh, logs, if we go to auth, this one ran at 1501, that seems consistent. Okay, that part worked, at least it looks like it worked. Did we get to the other API, the private endpoint? Well, people are yelling at each other outside. So private endpoint, it did get called at 1501, but it returned, could not authenticate you. User token response, what? Interesting. So there was an, an error in authenticating me. Uh, I think that's just something we can do anything about. Potentially, let's give it a shot. Uh, I think so. What kind of emoji should we use? This one. No. Nope. Failed to fetch. Hmm. Well, that's a weird error to get. 
basically the idea here yeah you know what I think I'm just gonna stop coding for now and we're gonna pick this up tomorrow it's I find it's better to go for like an hour a day than trying to do too much at once uh, the next step is here turn this into a loop that ties tweets together okay so that was that um, I'm not sure what the authentication error is right now and I'm don't feel like figuring it out so I'm gonna stop live coding thanks everyone for watching if you subscribe to YouTube or follow me on Twitter or wherever you get these notifications you will know when I next live code which is probably going to be tomorrow evening my time like 10 p.m. ish or so in in my evening but you know that's when I can do it so thanks for watching and I will see you again next time and hopefully this was fun enough